want some prints, but you also want props. Prints and props. Yeah! Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Prints and Props. This one's brought to you by the Digital Armory. And today I'm gonna to show you how to use the Duralumin Chrome system to turn your piece like this from boring plastic to this. Shiny, protected chrome. Now, before we get started with the actual instructions, I wanna talk a little bit about what's different about Duralumin versus some of the other chrome paints on the market. Number one, the cost. It's very, very inexpensive. In fact, it's actually the cheapest per ounce of any chrome paint on the market. Number two, it's pretty durable in its raw form. It will rub off eventually. The uh, tough version is a little bit tougher and more resistant to rubbing off than the regular version, but it's also a little bit more expensive. Uh, number three, you can clear coat it with solvent-based clear coats like 2K Clear, which is what I used here. And it comes out looking great. Uh, that's because of the way that the paint is designed. It's designed to work with solvent-based clear coats. Number four, it's compatible with a wide range of base coats. Um, you can use a water-based, a solvent-based, lacquer-based, urethane-based, lots of different kinds of base coats, and we will go through all of that in the instructions uh, when we do that. Number five, uh, it's really easy to spray. It can spray through an HVLP touch-up gun or an airbrush just fine. There are plans for later versions that will come in an aerosol, but that's not to the market yet. Um, so yeah. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with showing you how to spray this stuff. So the first thing you're going to want is a nice high quality primer. Um, in this case, I'm using the Duplicolor Automotive Primer, the Sandable Black. Um, and I'm just going to apply it kind of medium here, not super wet, not super light, just a nice medium coat. And uh, you can also use a 2K primer or a lot of other kinds. I tend to steer away from enamel based primers like Rust-Oleum because I just don't like them very much. Um, so yeah, just kind of lightly apply your primer until your piece is nice and covered for our next step. The next step here is the high quality clear coat. Here I'm using the 2K Automotive Clear because I find that that works the best for Duralumin. It lays a nice, slick, uh, wet looking, glass looking coat. Um, thanks to the high solids content of that urethane. Um, you can use other base coats, but the important thing is to get it super, super smooth, super, super wet. You don't want to go too light and then have it make orange peel or have any kind of contamination. Um, here's 1K clear, same kind of thing. The bottle or the uh, can says to do it lightly, but then you get orange peel. So you have to do it really, really heavy. Um, you don't want to go so heavy that you make the paint run and you ruin your base coat, but you want to just go you know, very nice, very even, very wet, glossy coat. Um, it should look, you know, like glass when you're done. So as a quick side note, here is an example of why I do not recommend lacquer-based. Uh, there might be brands out there that work, but so far every brand that I've tried has really just not cooperated with Duralumin. Um, here I am laying a clear coat on top. You can see it absolutely just murders the, uh, the effect and turns it gray. Uh, I also had really bad problems with crazing and hazing where you lay it on thick um, and it doesn't gloss out. Um, so there, you know, it looks glossy, but then uh, when that piece dried, it just looks super bad. So I do not recommend 1K lacquers for this. Um, and here is a water-based uh, base coat from Liquitex. It's their gloss varnish in a spray can. I really like this stuff. Um, you know, it's water-based, so it's very low toxicity. It is kind of hard to get it to spray down wet. You do have to go pretty darn heavy with it. It doesn't really like to level out. Um, again, I really like the 2K clear for that because it really just kind of melts into itself for that nice, super smooth glass base coat. Um, okay, so now we're going to spray our Duralumin and uh, we're going to do it first in an airbrush. And the first method that we're going to do is spraying it on very, very lightly uh, with lots of air. My air is cranked all the way up on my airbrush. Um, I do use a big giant uh, air compressor, you know, automotive air compressor, but I've got my air cranked all the way up and you can see where I just turned my fluid needle open just a bit, like not even a quarter turn, I think about an eighth of a turn, and I'm just super lightly dusting this stuff on. Um, that works fantastic for 2K and also for uh, more delicate 1K surfaces like lacquers. Um, and you just kind of go, you know, until it's covered. Um, 
that works well because you have a lot of control but now I'm going to open up the fluid needle and really blast it on uh, this method you can move really fast and blast it on and you'll see kind of a haze develop it's hard to see here but you can see a haze develop and then you hit it with just compressed air uh, without shooting out any paint and it rapidly dries and levels out to that high shine so you can see that looks great uh, Alright, our next application is going to be the HVLP touch-up gun. Uh, you're going to want to use a fairly small nozzle on this gun. I think I have a .6 or a .8. It's just the cheapo Harbor Freight Central Pneumatic gun. Uh, and I've got quite a bit more paint coming out uh, and quite a bit of air as well. I don't know my exact measurements. I just kind of play with it until I get it to, to work how I want. But you want the coating to really atomize meaning you want the particles to come out very very fine so if you use a lot of paint and not a lot of air the particles don't come out very fine so you want a good amount of air uh, and you want to regulate your paint based on using a lot of air um, and you just kind of go all around until it's covered and you end up with something like that a very very nice shine uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is after letting it dry for uh, about 10-15 minutes. You're going to lightly buff it with a, a nice soft cloth to get rid of any of the leftover, as they say, chrome dust. And uh, that leaves you with the super, super reflective surface. Uh, now the final thing we're going to do here is lay on some more 2K clear over the top of it to really protect it and make it uh, indestructible. Uh, once this is cleared with 2K clear, the uh, finish will never, never get damaged. Um, so we're going to clear it the same way we cleared our primer, our black primer. Uh, just one single wet coat. That's the nice thing about Duralumin. You don't need to mess with dusting any coats or anything like that. It's designed to just have a clear coat sprayed on it like any other paint. Um, so it does look a bit cloudy there, but as you'll see here, um, the cloudiness kind of goes away as the 2K begins to cure. Um, now I did get some dust specs in this finish and if this were for a finished piece I would polish those out uh, to make it super super nice. Uh, you can see here it's very very durable, does not rub off and will never rub off uh, essentially for the lifetime of your part. So yeah, that's about it. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial of how to spray Duralumin Chrome. If you're interested in picking up a bottle for yourself, head to the link below. Uh, there's the Digital Armory's Etsy shop, uh, and you can get a bottle there. Uh, yep, yeah, so thank you guys for watching, and good luck.